Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this talk about maturity categories for security champions. Uh, thank you to all uh, who have chosen to watch this talk. Um, this talk is in two parts. Uh, so the talk is um, firstly about security champions and then we'll cover the project, uh, which is maturity categories for security champions. So introductions first, uh, my name is Gareth Dixon. I'm a principal test engineer at SAGE. Uh, I also lead the UK and Ireland security champion community, and I've done that for four years now. I support the OWASP uh, Newcastle UK chapter uh, when I can, and I'm also studying for a master's degree in cybersecurity. I'll just go through a bit of background about the company that I work for. So uh, I work for Sage. Uh, Sage was founded in the UK in 1981, and we're a global supplier of business software uh, for businesses ranging from startups up to enterprise. We've got 13,000 colleagues, and of those, 2,500 are engineers. And within the engineering community, we have 200 security champions now, and we support a global security team who have 45 members. We're an active supporter of OWASP, and current and former Sage employees have created a number of OWASP projects. And where we have offices, uh, we also support chapters through attendance, or actually some of the Sage employees uh, are officers for those chapters. So I'm going to go through basically how I got started as a security champion. And this started about four years ago. So the internal security team created a, an initiative uh, which was called Raising the Bar. And the Raising the Bar initiative was about introducing a security champion program within SAGE and the engineering teams. Initially, that presentation, the, the, the project was shared with the leadership uh, within the organization to ensure that we had buy-in and commitment from a leadership perspective. And we'd be able to roll that out into the engineering teams. So at that time, uh, I was actually a people leader. Um, I've been in engineering for 10 years now, but uh, I worked my way up to a people leader. And at the time, I actually made the decision that I wanted to return to a tech role. Um, I was very interested in security, didn't consider myself an expert at the time, but I had good working relationships with the security team within Sage. So the Raising the Bar presentation, the Raising the Bar program was actually rolled out within Sage. And I sat down with one of the security team and volunteered to help out through leading that program in the UK and Ireland. So when we started out, uh, we had quite a flat structure in the UK and Ireland. So we had about 38 security champions spread across different offices and one lead champion, which was myself. So after a bit of analysis and reflection, that structure really wasn't working. So what we did was introduce the concept of a lead security champion and they would attend a weekly meeting uh, with other lead security champions, which would effectively be an engine for um, collaboration and uh, increasing security maturity throughout the organization. So what's it like to be a security champion at Sage? Um, I get involved with a lot of other teams, which I normally wouldn't uh, be involved with uh, because um, my expertise uh, now is sought after within the organization. Uh, I've built good relationships relationships with the um, global security team and um, I undertake a lot of training uh, and participate in internal and external events relating to security. Um, the security champion role essentially gives me a lot more opportunities from a personal development point of view, but also um, from a career perspective as well, um, as I'll be looking at some point to move into a, a purely security focused role, I think. So what do security champions do? Um, so essentially what we do is take responsibility for um, bringing security milestones into the development life cycle. If there are any issues, we escalate them to the security team. And what we do is also look at using maturity models uh, and perform gap analysis to see if there are areas of focus that we need to work on to improve our security maturity. We learn about the internal processes that we have relating to security controls, uh, threat modeling, and the definition of done, and ensure that the engineering teams are actually um, using those and adhering to those so that uh, we reach our own standards for security within the, within the life cycle. 
We learn about and work with uh, security tools, so that, whether that be uh, SAS or DAS tools, dependency checkers, etc. Uh, also, how we build security into our automation. And we also look at vulnerability tracking, so whether that be through internal activities or external um, pen tests, uh, we ensure that we have um, trackers for those for different products and services. We have internal champion meetups, uh, so we run internal conferences for security champions. I've already mentioned the weekly security champion leads meeting that we use as an engine, uh, an engine for collaboration. Uh, we also undertake training and certifications. So uh, we have an internal training program for security champions. And we also have security champions who've gone through um, recognized certifications in the area of security. We've built uh, a Sage security portal, uh, which is essentially a, a central repository for security information relating to policies and standards, uh, security information relating to particular application tech stacks also information around our definition of done and the use of maturity models as well. We collaborate with other security champions around the organization. So I've mentioned that we have um, essentially a, a global organization. So security champions from different regions will collaborate as well. <clears throat> and also we look to um, spend time volunteering uh, for things like um, digital defenders or STEM outreach programs where we help out um, local students or, or organizations uh, when it comes to improving security or knowledge of security. So security champions uh, are recommended by a number of different uh, maturity models or programs. So I've already kind of mentioned BSIM. Uh, there's also OWASP SAM, uh, Safe Code Guide, uh, NIST, SANS, uh, Mozilla Verif Vericode, and check marks. Uh, and there's also the um, OWASP Security Champions Playbook, uh, which was created by uh, Alexander Antip. So why have security champions? Essentially, this is all about increasing our AppSec maturity, really. Within an organization, security champions can increase the maturity of security within the organization by undertaking training themselves or depending on their level of expertise <clears throat> they can deliver training to others within the organization uh, within sage the security champion program has been recognized as a cornerstone to our upsec journey over the last four years and that influences things like strategy and metrics when it comes to security a lot of our security champions as well uh, undertake security testing or work with external consultants around pen testing as well. And also uh, look at how we bring in security code reviews uh, to our products and services too. So let's have a look at some of the statistics uh, from the latest BSIM. Uh, so the BSIM, which is building security and maturity model, <clears throat> basically that looks at um, a number of different firms who signed up to undertake um, an assessment under the BSIM framework. And in the last version, 122 firms uh, completed this. And that represents 468,000 developers, 6,298 satellite members in this context of security champions, and SSG members, which are the core security personnel within a particular organization, that would be 1,000. 596. If you look at the top, create a growing a satellite, which is essentially a security champions program, 42.6% of firms have that in place. But if you look at the bottom, uh, where we've got a reward progression through curriculum for those who are effectively in security champion roles, only 2.5% have that in place. So what does OWASP SAM say about security champions? So that would be the OWASP security maturity model. So basically, have you identified a security champion for each dev team? Are the security champions re receiving appropriate training? Do you train your architects and other stakeholders in practical threat modeling? And do the application security and dev teams receive periodic briefings from security champions? 
Maturity level two looks at product champions and whether they are responsible for promoting the use of security tools. But in the context of this talk, uh, we're really interested in maturity level three, which is developing a platform to help identify future members of the security software of excellence or security champions based on their expertise and willingness to help others. So we want to understand really how we recognize and reward security champions. And one of the key things really that we need to look at is knowledge. So knowledge itself can be a reward and through personal development and training, increasing your skills and your capabilities is, is, is a good thing. But one of the things that we should really look at is things like career advancement, as having increasing skills and increasing capabilities uh, individuals who are undertaking those security champion roles really want to look at what does this mean for my career? How can I progress? Also corporate training, uh, that's something which um, we would deliver to security champions over and above the standard uh, basic training which engineers would receive. But the software security group essentially, which is the internal security team for an organization really need to have a means to monitor security knowledge in the in the firm. In terms of some internal events, you know, prizes like coffee mugs and t-shirts are nice to have, but really um, it's going to take the possibility of a real career progression to change behavior. So thank you for listening. I hope you find that insightful. Um, and now I'm going to hand over to Lucien Collin, who's going to talk about the second part of this talk, which is the Maturity Categories for Security Champions project. Thanks for listening. Thanks very much, Gareth, for uh, taking care of part one of this presentation. Um, uh, it was obviously very, very important to introduce the concept of security champions first, uh, to kind of understand uh, what's happening with this concept uh, around the world. Uh, it is the reason why we insisted on BSIM 10 uh, and the statistics. Um, it is important to understand that there are a number of organizations and standards which recommend security champions. Um, and basically, it is my duty now to introduce the project which will help you manage uh, some of the late, later stages of a security champions initiative, um, mostly focusing on the maturity levels two and three. Um, I'm Lucien, I work in Sage, um, I am the AppSec head, lead the application security team uh, in Sage. Uh, I used to work for OWASP, um, obviously in a volunteer uh, uh, manner, uh, chapter lead for one of the Romanian chapters. I'm currently supporting the UK chapter. Um, been working in security for a while now in AppSec, in the AppSec field for about six to seven years. Um, and in general, security for a long time. Um, and uh, you can check my security weekly at securitystock.co. Uh, I extract uh, those news which I believe are relevant, especially for AppSec people. Um, and I post them uh, once a week. So if you're interested, you can check uh, this weekly at my website. Um, I will um, go through the project now. We came up with a name for it, which is Maturity Categories for Security Champions. Maybe uh, this name can change, uh, but it, it, I will explain the reasons why we chose this name. Um, it's because security champions uh, need to evolve, and we need to tell them how they need to evolve, um, because they will know themselves. Some of them I guess, might guess how, uh, most of them might not. And I think it's the, the, the duty of the security team, which, by the way, some of them, as Gareth said, will be joining the security team at some point. But for the ones that don't, we need to capture uh, their, their kind of security journey. Um, and we need to, to, to achieve that. We need to take note of the actions that they perform for security. Uh, obviously, those actions can be done at various levels of maturity. So this is what this is about. This is introducing the categories uh, on, on which security champions can contribute. Uh, we as kind of associated it with OWASP Top 10, 
just to make it more familiar to, to people familiar to OWASP. Uh, there are indeed 10 categories and I will go through them uh, right now. Um, these are the categories. Um, you see maturity levels one, two and three and there is a later slide which will be effectively detailing each of the activities that can be performed against, uh, against these categories. But I will go, go briefly through the categories themselves. Um, the first one is the use of tools. Um, most, of, most security champions, when they start, um, maybe before they even become champions, they start playing around with security tools. Uh, most of them maybe start with OWASP ZAP, then they potentially uh, look at uh, static code analysis tools, um, now dependency checking is much more available uh, through various solutions out there, uh, through GitHub, through SNCC, through dependency checker, of course, the OWASP. Um, so the first category is pretty straightforward. And by the way, this doesn't apply only to developer security champions. It applies to um, security champions from other fields, from DevOps, from well, pure ops, uh, maybe even desktop support security champions. So really it's the use of security tools um, and uh, a later slide will explain the levels, the maturity levels. Bounty refers to, as you might suspect, the bug bounties. Um, security champions can contribute in various ways. They can perform the triage. Uh, obviously, they will be involved in fixing the issues. Um, they could even manage a, a, a smaller uh, bug bounty challenge. So there are various ways in which uh, security champions can contribute to bug bounties, and this is what this category is about. Training is is a very very straightforward. This one, uh, most of the security champions initiatives out there propose training um, uh, to security champions, and this can be done at various levels. Um, and uh, this is what the maturity levels uh, for this category will be about, depending on the difficulty of the training. Um, uh, the champions will be considered more or less mature. Um, events, this refers to attending or presenting uh, or even organizing events. Um, we have examples such as Gareth, uh, which we, they, they have organized events uh, locally and globally uh, in, in SAGE, internally and externally. Um, uh, champions that have presented at OWASP and at other conferences um, so uh, their contribution to events also needs to be taken into consideration, I believe. Um, uh, security operations, security ops. Uh, we had champions, and this was actually very much recommended by one of our other lead security champions, uh, Dave. He um, insisted that champions can contribute to OSINT. Um, and, and luckily, they actually found a few things hanging out there on the internet which should not be there. Um, obviously, there are many other ways in which uh, a security champion can contribute to, to security operations. Uh, and this, mat this maturity category, I very much admit, ca can or should receive much more love than it has. Uh, I'm, we are very much open to contributions for, for, this, uh, for this particular category. Security reviews and assessments, this can be of any flavor. Um, it's important uh, to, to capture these um, uh, very important, I would say maybe it's one of the most important categories. Security champions that can't produce security reviews themselves uh, are super useful, I think, to any company. Uh, they obviously are able to analyze the, 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 the application with uh, very different lenses to a, uh, to a penetration tester, which theoretically doesn't know much about the application or knows only what was uh, what he, he or she was introduced to. Um, research, uh, this exactly as the category name suggests, uh, revolves around performing research in, in the context of information security. Um, they could be uh, researching for an alternative fix to an issue. They could be researching for um, uh, innovative issue zero days. Um, anything, that, or uh, obviously it has to go into design potentially as well. So any sort of design patterns uh, specific to security that could be elaborated uh, go into, into this category, which actually links uh, very closely with the next one, 
which is development for security. Um, they could be developing tools um, <clears throat> to be used by the security team or by themselves. There are now automated pipelines for a few years, uh, which, uh, which use developer or security champions develop, develop tools um, uh, for automated security testing, for example. Um, this activity uh, will be captured against this category. Reporting, I, I added this one because um, I think uh, reporting is important to, to everyone out there. Um, you need to show the leadership of your business um, what you're doing. You need, you need to, to, to demonstrate um, you know, progress to, uh, against your strategy. Uh, you need to show that the stats are going in the right direction. And uh, I guess in a, in a security champion developer world, it's important to show that remediation is happening uh, as, as soon as uh, it, it is necessary. Um, for example, in Sage, you need to fix a critical issue in two days. Um, and uh, it's important to show that we have actually done that. Um, and this is what this point is about. Uh, finally, threat modeling. Um, obviously, uh, it, it refers to design and the, the contribution of developers to security and privacy by design. This can also be done at various maturity levels. Um, you can or you can participate in a threat model. You can organize a threat model. Uh, you can document a threat model properly. Uh, this uh, uh, again will uh, be associated with different maturity levels uh, for this category. Um, now, you were wondering how do we capture all of these things? Um, and uh, and it is through an app. Uh, there is an Excel version currently available until we make the, the app itself available, uh, which would be relatively soon. I hope by the end of October, we would be able to make this public. Um, and nonetheless, in the, in the meantime, there is an Excel version available. On screen now, it is the, the actual app, uh, which shows the profile of the security champions, shows the belt, that the, the, the belt color that the, the, the champion has achieved. Uh, it shows the rank on the, on the kind of the security champions leaderboard. Um, all of these activities, what I, which I've mentioned earlier, they all uh, receive one, two or three points. This is kind of the suggested uh, way of, of keeping track of things is through points. Um, and uh, as you can see on screen, it shows the rank, it shows the, the, the as I said, the, the color of the belt and the maturity level. You can share an achievement, you can comment on an achievement, uh, and it obviously, you can obviously log achievements, as you can see on screen. Um, this is meant to be available to everyone, uh, including non-champions, so they can have a look and see, uh, you know, who's, who's in the first place, what have they done, uh, maybe they can contribute. You don't really need to be a, an official, officially a security champion to, to, uh, to be taken into consideration. Any security activity performed by anyone should be able to find its way to, to, this, to this app that we will be introducing. Um, we, uh, we will be introducing this app uh, with, with an API attached to it. So if you will need to uh, hook it up to any other system uh, that you're using to keep track of things. That's, that should be very much possible. Um, it's important maybe for, um, let's, let's imagine uh, there are a number of vulnerabilities found for one of your applications. Uh, it would be good to know quickly, if possible, or in, a, in an automated uh, manner, if the team uh, um, responsible for that product um, has been trained. Uh, what have been trained? Have they been trained against? Uh, what sort of performance they have uh, in regards to activities uh, uh, performed for security? Uh, where do they stand at that point in time when those vulnerabilities have been identified? Maybe they're not doing the right training. Maybe they're they're doing activities for security, but not in that area which relates to the vulnerabilities that have been identified. Um, so it's important to have a to have some sort of connection between this system and a vulnerability management system. So our intention is to link this uh, with our vulnerability management system for 
for to, to determine in a in a in a better way what's going on in a more precise way what's going on with the security of um, of uh, of our products. So this is the app. Uh, we watch this space. Uh, the GitHub um, uh, uh, repo is is linked uh, in this slide. Um, the app will be made available on the same on the same space as the Excel and this this presentation. Um, in the next slides, in the next two slides, um, I have the detailed uh, uh, bits. Uh, so. Uh, effectively each uh, explaining each of the maturity levels uh, for these categories that I've uh, I've defined earlier I, I, I will not go into detail uh, in this slide um, I hope uh, it is straightforward for everyone the Excel is public and it allows uh, people to comment so please do contribute to it uh, and and let's make these categories more more clear um, if this eventually will be pushing um, the, um, uh, the kind of the application security sector towards um, a world where devs do security by default and we don't even need to call them champions because um, they, they already perform security kind of by default, then I hope it helps us to get there. But until we get there, um, this project uh, as I was mentioning at the beginning, um, we hope it can be associated with maturity two and three uh, for for OWASP, uh, SAM, and and BSIM maturity models. Um, the the second slide with the detail is the the Excel that allows you to keep track of things. Now this is this is uh, what the, the the app that I showed earlier uh, will be doing. Uh, if you prefer to use Excel, if you prefer to import this Excel or borrow this Excel to use it in a in your own app or in a different app that achieves the same things uh, you are you are very much free to do so um, uh, there are two things I, I just want to mention this there are two things that are important to um, uh, that this Excel is achieving one is it is um, keeping track of your belt color which would be renewing on an annual basis uh, I'm anticipating this as a question do you reset this or will this is go forever? Our recommendation is that this gets reset at every six months or one year. Uh, whereas the leaderboard could potentially continue beyond that year. Um, because uh, as I was mentioning at some point, some of these security champions will join the security team. I think it is, it is good to see kind of their whole journey uh, since they've become champions. Um, their whole security journey of kind of helping the security team. Um, and finally, I want to kind of end with why we're doing this. Um, and it is to support security champions. We've, we've realized in Sage that um, recognition um, and rewarding, uh, whilst it might happen here and there, it, it wasn't organized properly. Some people were n not recognized when they should have been. They were recognized much later or not at all. Um, s things were not visible uh, to, to the security team uh, and they were not visible to their managers properly. Uh, it, will, it, will sh it will offer a, uh, an exact uh, view of uh, what, are, what are these champions really spending their time on. And as you can see, one of these, one of the points on the slide says that uh, this project will help security champions fulfill their objectives towards contributing with how much percent of their time to security. Now in Sage, it is 10%, uh, but obviously depending on, the, uh, on, on your business, depending on the experience of the champion, depending on the dimension of your security team, as Gareth was, was mentioning in, in, in the statistics slide earlier, the uh, the kind of the ratio of security champions to security team um, is is uh, one to four. It will be one security person and and four security champions associated with uh, with that security uh, professional. Um, how much time do they need to to dedicate? Um, again, ten percent is is our um, is our recommendation, but it is it is up to you to determine that. Uh, hopefully, this this project can help could help at determining that as well, because some 
some some uh, security champions in Sage have trouble identifying how much time they've actually spent. They they have trouble keeping track themselves on on the many things that they have they have done uh, towards helping the security team. Really, it's a it's a way to scale, um, and 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 this app is a way to manage this the scaling. Um, some champions don't know how to contribute to security. This will help them achieve that. Uh, they will grow because they will know what to do to grow. Uh, they will be recognized and rewarded. I already mentioned that. They will keep track of their, their progress. Um, and I don't want to go through all of them. Uh, but if I, 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 lastly, I want to mention is, is building a capability. Uh, we don't want security champions um, to kind of stay flat. We want them to grow. And we want to build that capability. Maybe for certain products, they could take the the control, the full control of security themselves. So they don't need to rely on the security team at all, really. Maybe just for advice uh, now and then. Um, and uh, once they have received this advice for a few years, they have contributed to security uh, for some time, uh, and they have proven uh, their uh, their uh, their expertise. Uh, they can join the security team, and some of them have uh, in Sage, um, and uh, I'm, I'm sure many more will. Um, I think this is this is this was my part. This is what I wanted to to um, to, to to detail in this presentation. Um, I hope it was enough to convince you that um, this tool is needed. That it was a, a gap. Um, uh, many people have spoken about champions in the. In, in as part of OASP or outside of OASP, many private companies or, or consultancies have mentioned security champions, but uh, we haven't, we haven't, we've, we, I've never seen anyone um, de uh, explain how to manage these champions, especially if they are in a great number, such as such as we have in Sage. It's about about 200 security champions. Um, you you can't you can't uh, deal with a number like that without a, a tool. Um, that's what I wanted to mention. Uh, I hope you found this educational and I hope to uh, receive questions. Uh, you can write to uh, my email. You'll find me on, on OWASP. You'll find me on, um, in, in other places. Um, there are some presentations with, with me made in the past as part of the OWASP uh, chapter meetings in London. Um, so please get in contact and ask me anything you need to in relationship to this project. Thank you very much.